Hey guys, this stock is actually a stock that was previously on our watch list about a couple of months ago. It moved up, I took it off, and now it's dropped again. So I've added it back. That is Ida Corp Incorporated. You see that it came down a few weeks, dropped sort of significantly, moved sideways for a couple of weeks, and now it really dropped this week. So it's back on our watch list. It is at $88.40 a share. It is a two stars. You know, I break my stocks down into three tiers. Three star, the most fundamentally sound. Two stars believe that, believe that, and one star, the least most fundamentally sound, but still sound enough to make the watch list. And from the current price of $88.40 a share, Yahoo analysts estimate it can go up to $105.43 in the next 12 months. Now, Having said that, let's jump over to our figures and do the analysis on this stock. And we see that Ida Corp actually has an earnings date coming up, February 15th, 2024. That is next Thursday. And we know with earnings reports, those can be like being in the casino. You never know what you're going to get. The earnings report can go well and the stock price can really jump. That happened this week for a few of us because I warned you guys about Young China's earnings report and the stock price really jumped up. And I warned you about Hershey's earnings report, and the stock price really jumped up. I believe it was jumped up $8 by the end of today. But in any event, there was another stock that considerably dropped due to an earnings report from around $280 a share to $215. So, if you're holding stocks, you can lose a bit of your money from an earnings report. And if you're holding an option, you can lose all the money on the option if the earnings report goes badly. Just a fair warning. So it's sort of like a casino effect. This week it worked out for me, but some it will not. In any event, during the last five years, let's look at how this stock did. In 2018, their low price was $70.01 a share, and their high price was $89.62 a share. That was an increase of 28.01% by the end of the year. In 2019, their low price was 79.19% or 79.19 cents. The high price was $100.98. That was an increase of 27.52% by the end of the year. In 2020, the low price was 67.11 cents. It dropped lower because of COVID lockdowns probably. And at the high price, it was at $102.15. That was an increase of 52.21%. In 2021, the low price, $80.18. The high price, $107.69. That was an increase of 34.31%. And in 2022, they were at $91.90 at the low price, 
$113.36 at the high price, that was an increase of 23.35%. Now, as of this year, we caught them at $88.40 at a PE of 16.49. If they move up to $105.43 a share, like Yahoo analysts estimate, that would be an increase of 19.26% during the course of this year. That's providing the earnings per share stays consistent. Now let's look at the fundamentals. And if we want to jump down to the income statement, we see that in 2018, they made $1,370,000,000. 752,000. They retained 226 billion, or I'm sorry, they retained 226 million, 801,000. That was a 16.55% profit margin. That's decent. In 2019, they made 1 billion, 346 million. 383,000. They retained after paying expenses 233 232,854,000. That's a 17.29% profit margin. In 2020, they made 1,350,729,000. They retain two hundred and thirty seven million four hundred and seventeen thousand. That was a seventeen point five eight percent profit margin. In twenty twenty or twenty twenty one, they made one billion four hundred and fifty eight million eighty four thousand. After paying expenses, they retained two hundred and forty five million. 245,550,000. That's a 16.84% profit margin. And in 2022, they made 1 million, 1 billion. They made 1 billion, 643 million, 981,000. They retained 258 million. 982,000. That's a 15.75% profit margin. So their profit margins across the five years are not spectacular, but I'd say they're decent to a good. If we go down to their return on equity, in 2018, it was 9.55%. 2019, 9.43%, 2020, 9.25%, 2021, 9.18%, and 2022, 9.20%. So their return on equity is consistent across all five years. And I'd not say it's great or spectacular. I'd say it's decent. Debt to equity in 2018, 168.66, 2019, 168.81, 2020, 176.46, 2021, 169.53, and 2022, 168. So their debt to equity is decent and consistent as well. So we see that 
their current assets exceeded their current liabilities all five years. Same thing for total assets and total liabilities. It's a decent balance sheet. Now this company did pay a dividend. $121 million. Four hundred and twenty one thousand in twenty eighteen, a hundred and twenty nine million six hundred and seventy seven thousand in twenty nineteen, a hundred and thirty seven million eight hundred and thirteen thousand in twenty twenty, a hundred and forty six million one hundred and nineteen thousand in twenty twenty one, and a hundred and fifty four million two hundred and eighty seven thousand in 2022 there was no changes to capital stock they didn't buy more shares they didn't sell more shares across those five years but as far as free cash flow they had Two hundred and thirteen million seven hundred and seventy three thousand twenty eighteen, eighty seven million nine hundred and twenty thousand twenty nineteen, seventy seven million one hundred and ninety three thousand twenty twenty, sixty three million two hundred and sixty five thousand in twenty twenty one, and eighty one million three hundred and four thousand in twenty twenty two. And after paying off the dividends in 2018, they still had 92,352,000. In 2019, they still had 41,757,000. In 2020, 2020, 21, and 22, we ran into some problems. In 2020, 21, and 22, they didn't have enough free cash flow to pay out all the dividends that they paid out. So, in 2020, after paying out the dividend, it was negative 60,620,000. In 2021, it was negative 82,854,000. And in 2022, it was negative 235,591,000. So, and I believe their free cash flow was positive all years except for the last one. In my opinion, they maybe shouldn't even have given a dividend until they got that money straight. In any event, this company paid, they last paid an 83 cents dividend. Their beta was 0 0.57, they're moving slower than the general market. The outstanding shares were 50.62 million. And of those 50.62 million, 0.46%, um, half of 1%, is owned by insiders and those working for the company. And 87.25% is owned by large banks and institutions. Their dividend yield was 3.71%. Yeah, so they had a decent, I'd say a decent dividend yield. And they're about to give a dividend out on the 28th of this month. But it's too late to be eligible for that dividend. You would have had to own the stocks before February 2nd. 
Now, Miss Lisa A. Grow. She was born 1965, so she may be around, maybe 56, is the CEO, president and director. And she was appointed in June of 2020. So we're still evaluating how she's doing. And maybe three years of the analysis would fall under her leadership. And we know Ida Corp Inc. is in the utility, utilities and regulated electric industry and the utilities sector. So that's it for the analysis on this stock, guys. Have a great night, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.